Ooh, what is up, you guys? And of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi Fi battle with yours truly, the Scarender. And today we're going against an upcoming Poketuber called Eevee's Cliche. And he is a very, very good battler. I'm gonna link him down below, so make sure to check him out. Um, I got to know this guy through Veria, which is a follower on Twitter and a very, very good friend. Uh, she got um, knocked out by this guy in the Lithio region NU tournament. And we pretty much swore revenge on this guy, just to jokes, of course. But uh, he sadly uh, lost before that, and uh, I lost to the same player that he lost to. And uh, we never really got to battle afterwards, but, you know, finally, it's going down. This Sphinx is real. And I've looked through his channel a little bit, so I know he's kind of an underdog player with a lot of blockers. So, uh, as an underdog player, I really can't give him too much. I knew I had to bring a lot of original stuff to make sure that he doesn't doesn't know what the safe plays are in this battle and i really thought that that was my only way of um, dealing with him properly so he's gonna bring the stauntler girder oh was it called that on pheasant lantern zotu and the caracosta and i'm gonna expect either caracosta or zotu to be the lead i myself using dna uh, volbeat lunatune murkrow Lantern and Pillowswine, and my Pillowswine is not a setter, it is a sweeper, so I kind of try to avoid revealing that as long as I can. And of course, both my Detonate and Volbeat are choice banded physical sweepers because, let's face it, you don't use them like that, that is why it kind of works. And my Murkrow is a special sweeper, I don't want to give that away, and uh, pretty much my Lunatune is somewhat of a setup Pokemon with the uh, stealth rocks and stuff like that, and Lantern is a cleric. And uh, well, I just I knew I had to start off with DNA and scalp whatever comes in because I will be able to speed. So let's actually get into the battle. So I had to of course speed up the battle a little bit because it was actually a 42 turn battle, which was really really something. So at the get clear, it's gonna bring the Caracos as I expected, and I'm going to expect him to go for a knockoff or um, a shell smash. So I'm just going for U-turn, denting the sturdy. I don't want to do a super effective damage in case it got the weakness policy. So I'm gonna scout out for a Shell Smash, I really thought that might be the safer bet for it. He actually go for Stealth Rock, which shows me that he's somewhat of a supporter, which means that I felt, you know, really, really cocky here and went for Brick Break, thinking it did impact the weakness policy. He did. And that is basically my Volbeat out of the way first turn, basically. It didn't get to do anything, and that crit, I, it might have mattered, but I think not. I really don't think so. He just destroyed me and it was very fair. So I went for a Scald here. I did expect him actually to switch out to his own Lantern. So I didn't want to go for a Volt Switch, even though it might have seemed like a better move. I know Scald would kill anyway. So here comes the Stauntler, and I did expect him to go for Retaliate. But at the same time, I really didn't want to showcase my Luna Tune just yet. Plus, I know I can kind of soak that. So I went for a Volt Switch afterward, getting some damage on this, which is really what I wanted to. And getting some momentum. So I'm going to bring Volus here afterwards. And I'm going to expect him that I'm going to go for my Stealth Rocks. Pretty much, I've, I'm so sure that he's going to do the safer move and go for Exotu. So I went for an Ice Beam. And the reason I did that, even though it is unstabbed, it still does some fair damage. And I can force him out in worst case scenarios. I felt extremely safe doing that. But I'm not going to stay in for another one of these. I'm just going to expect him, since I went for an Ice Beam, that he's might going to want to go for a Cold Mind or a Toxic. So I'm just going to go for Crusher which is my Bill's Wine, which got the Ice Shard and really just tried to do some damage on it. And since he is an underdog player, I do know that it's going to be somewhat bulky and he's not going to want to sack this as long as my Luna Tune is back or is around. So he goes for Tailwind actually. And after this, he will switch out. So I went for Nerdquake. Like I said, his playstyle kind of gives away that he wants to preserve his pokes. So I really just tried to do little damage on every poke until I can actually start off a sweep with my DNA because as long as my DNA get a free playoff against a lot of these pokes, you can actually take them out as soon as they are a bit damaged. So I go into Helga, my Lantern, taking the knockoff. I really had no idea on which one to poke or to sack, but Lantern, you know, felt at least the, the least useful in this battle, so I decided to sack her off. I really didn't have any real use for it. So I bring an Actros here, and um, I do expect him to stay in here and take the player off, but I miss. And that was extremely crucial, because a player off would not have killed it, but definitely would have taken it down to a very low amount of HP. 
and uh, he's gonna sack off the Sawtooth. At least one thing is going for me, and that is that I now can set up my rocks, finally. And uh, he's gonna bring the Stauntler, and at this point I really I already so showcased my Ice Beam, so there's no means for me of actually trying to do anything else. Just try to soak that out. Volis, my Luna Tune, is my best bet, and uh, she's gonna take this beautifully. And um, this set that I'm using with Luna Tune is a support set with Pain Split, Stealth Rocks, and Ice Beam Earth Power. Ice Beam Earth Power is unstabbed, but they cover so many grounds that it might actually be worth uh, going for those type of moves. So I set up my rocks, and uh, I really did not know what to expect here. I know I can take one Scald, and should be able to outspeed, so... I just went straight off the bat for an Earth Power. And I really didn't do so much damage. That is actually quite terrifying. So he went for Hidden Power. And that shows me that he got Hidden Power Gross. So at this point it was alright. I can't... Uh, I maybe I can't do too much damage on it, but I can at least go for a Pain Split. That should put me back on track, because I don't have any investment in HP whatsoever. And yeah, that holds true. It really, really gave me a lot of HP back, so... Even though it goes for further away paralyzing me, I was thinking at least I can go for another Pain Split, whittle it down, and then switch out. So I did expect a Skull, of course, from him, but it actually has Hydro Pump. And uh, he scores a crit here, and it ends up matter because I am invested, but it, you know, it's give or take. I could have been for the Paralyzed too, and that would have been just a waste of turn anyway. But the thing is that that was kind of when it broke down on me that uh, I cannot get enough momentum to stop him now because I did miss my player up with Choice Band, which means that now that freaking, and I mean freaking, Girder can actually work rather properly, being the defi the finally check to my uh, to my pillar swine, which could sweep freely without it, and of course Lantern with Hydro Pump can take it out eventually. So I'm going to sadly sacrifice my Actros, which you know, being that it is whittled down without a choice band, I just had to sack it off. And really, if I have to give HP back to Girder, I'd rather make my Rodent do that, which barely have any HP left. So, he goes for, goes for Mac Punch, and that is definitely the right play to do. So now, I only got two Pokemons left, but they do have some strength in them, and I'm gonna speed up this because I am somewhat stally here. I'm going directly for the Heat Wave, I'm actually hoping to do as much damage as possible on the Gerda, but he do, do decide to switch out to his uh, Lantern here, and uh, I just realized that, alright, I cannot defeat it as it stands, but I can go for Call Mines with my Prankster and actually wall it out. So I was definitely going for that and just thought for myself, I I have to do this. So he does miss the Hydro Pump there, which means that Hydro Pump is probably his only real good attacking move. He doesn't pack the Thunderbolt or the Ice Beam, which means that two Call Mines should be enough to be around for a long time. He goes here for the Thunder Wave and... Uh, I myself will do everything in my power to try and attack it, but with the Thunder Wave, of course, it's not able to outspeed. And he will go for Hydro Pump here, showcase how much damage it will do, and uh, yeah, that is that is nothing. Obviously, that is nothing. So I felt really, really comfortable here, so I did decide just to roost up and um, you know, try to take position and do as much damage as possible. So he goes for another Hydro Pump, and um, yeah, that won't do, that won't do. So, he should definitely decided to switch out eventually here, but he finally scores a crit, and that did way more than I was comfortable with, so I pretty much was hoping here to, you know, not be fully paralyzed. I did text him, you know, GG, the game is practically over because I can't go around it, and as long as the girder is involved, my pill swine can do anything either. So, I do finally, or not finally, I do actually manage to um, <laughs> score a roost there. And I'll go for another attack, but it will sadly fall short, so I decided to... Alright, I may... I'm forced to roost up here, but no, I'm fully paralyzed, of course. And he goes yet again for another Hydro Pump, does not score a crit. And, uh, yeah, I'm basically just PP stalling here with the Hydro Pumps, because... As long as this thing doesn't have Hydro Pump, my Pill Spine should actually be just fine with it. So, I do go for roost here, feeling really, really comfortable. And uh, the thing was, if I could take an Ice Punch or not, and I barely, barely survived, go for the Heat Wave, finish that guy off. And I was so glad that I pulled that off, because now it means at least that my Pillow Swine, if not, the Lantern got a few Hydro Pumps left, that my Pillow Swine should actually be able to deal with the pokes that are left inside there. 
So he goes for a sky attack here, and really, you know, obliterating the Skyrander with a sky attack? Not cool, man. Not cool. <laughs> so Murkrow is going out, and I mean, with a crit and all, you know, the Hex gods were definitely looking upon me this time. Really were. And I decided to go for, I think if I remember correctly, I went for a curse right off the bat, because I really, really didn't see a reason to not do that, and trying to wall out unnecessary stuff here. And I really need. I knew I needed at least two curses for uh, finish off a Stantler with an eye shot. So I tried to with my. If if he doesn't have a hydro pump left, I can at least you know do some damage on it and try to kill it. I obviously doesn't do that, but he kind of showcased me that he doesn't have any hydro pumps left, which means one thing and one thing only. I am actually free to set up more curses. So I'm going to speed up this even further because. I am actually one of those very rare, very annoying positions where my stalling paid off and my pure swine is actually packing rest and he doesn't score a crit on me, which means one thing there that he won't break through my EV light and I'll actually manage to survive his hidden power grasses. And I go for rest and yeah, I mean, like I said, there's really nothing you can do here and you know, it kind of shows too that, you know, the battle is not over until the very last turns and even though the hacks were against me, I I actually pulled this off and uh, the reason I sound so happy about it is because I really didn't feel that I deserved it because EV Cliché really, really did a good game here and um, he only lost because of my early game prediction which is something I was forced to do to be able to match with him and uh, you know the girder being very very potent and strong was probably the biggest threat for me and the lantern not packing scold really really helped me here and um, basically it came down to whether or not the bulk that was left in my team could pull through and uh, I'll say they did that just fine it was close but it worked and I think Eva Cliche like I said really really played a good game here the only reason I won was because I was so persistent of not losing I just I couldn't mentally handle that I was lost due to a player of 95% move was missing uh, or no, it wasn't that decisive in the end of end thoughts of things, but really, that was so frustrating for me. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that battle, and it was very fun to have one of those quality battles before this X and Y going down with you know, Omega Rube and all. But really, check out Evie's Cliché, he's really did a very good game here, and I really, really believe that, you know, it could have ended at any time for me. I just needed two paralyzations in a row to lose with my Murkrow, and as long as the uh, Gerda was around, my Pilswine could definitely not have dealt with it. So it was really fun, you know, pulling through, I guess, with all the hacks involved against me, because I did the right prediction. I felt like I had the game until the very point where, well, until the game just said, nope, that is not how it's gonna go down, and basically it slid me off the momentum, you know, taking both my. Uh, misses the play rough and a crit hydro pump. Yeah, those two things really, really stopped my momentum. And I, like I said, I barely won because of the bull that I had left on my team. So, yeah, make sure to check Evie Clish out. I really mean that, guys. Like I said, he's an upcoming pocket tuber. I'm sure we'll see a lot more about him in, in the next uh, season here of Omega Ruben Alpha Zephyr here. So, with that in mind, I actually have a question of the day. Uh, who is your favorite new? Pocketuber, that is a Pocketuber that came this generation. Seeing, you know, a lot of new Pocketubers coming around and, uh, you know, inviting people to the game and just, there are a lot of them are a little older, or, you know, in their 20s, which means that they feel really serious. So, and I can really appreciate that. So, with that in mind, who is your favorite new one from this specific generation? I'm going to do a little fade out because I actually have three people that can, you know, that comes in mind. Uh, first of all, he's definitely Jack, or uh, just me, while because he's definitely one of those guys, you know, being a good friend, and we um, juggle a lot of thoughts on the meta game, and, you know, we became better battles because of that, so he definitely, he definitely, you know, deserves that shout-out, and uh, also, Anima, of course, for the same reason, C came in the middle of the meta game, I think six months in, and, you know, brought quality content, a lot of humor to the games, and yeah, just basically become a great thing. I was really appreciating that. And you know, as a friend too, I mean, she had a lot of good good thinking and we could just joke about things. And I think that's very important as a pocket tuber to be able to uh, 
not be that serious you know just doing it for it is a hobby in first place and of course it's, I, you will become happy because of the followers you get and i guess the last one must be dynamic kush he i mean i've been missing out on his first 60 battles ish so i don't really know when he started off but one thing is for sure i have been missing out i really have and he is a very very good person in general so it's very fun seeing at least another pocketuber that's been around i think as long as i have which means that we just didn't click at the start off and it really sucks because players like that doesn't come around too much so i was really glad you know to finally meet him in of course twitter and youtube not in real life but at least finding out who he is and you know also like a very very a very mature person uh, with a lot of humor i can i do appreciate that like i said with anima and just me for the same reason being being able to joke about these kind of things and you know we're working it through as a hobby really it eases up and it you it keeps you inspired to do the same so those three guys are the persons that i think are my favorite pocket tubers from this generation so you know you can mention as many as you want of course but maybe not like, like a list of 20 <laughs> seems kind of wasted you know we maybe explain a little why um you don't have to but you know so so we all understand we get get to read it so with that in mind guys and uh, don't forget to leave a like of course and if you're new to this channel of course don't forget to subscribe to the sky render and with that in mind the sky is the limit so have a good day and take care guys all right mm -hmm. bye